this is your question. Thank you for putting us first. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Little boys sleep. <laughs> you could do that to children. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I am going to recuse myself from the next two uh, applications as I do work with Scott Benton. I'm going to hand over the board uh, to Leslie mm -hmm. to leave uh, the meeting for the next two applications. Okay, so this is a review. I'll recuse myself as well. A review of everyone on Wall Street? So that's not a quorum. Right. I will make a very, very brief presentation. We will not act on anything. Okay. You can't. This, uh, this is, I think, the seventh or eighth time I've been before this commission um, as it relates to 301 Wall Street. Tonight, I am here requesting, making a presentation on the applicant's request to install two very small lights on either side of the John Street door. The door has been installed that was approved by this commission about two years ago. Um, there is a photo simulation that shows the, the two lights and a cut sheet on the proposed light fixture. We can't act on it, so that's all I have to present on that item. So, so then we'll move on to two, three Wall Street. Another very brief presentation. Also having to do with lights. The applicant would like to uplight the facade. There is a cut sheet of the proposed fixture. Um, the sidewalk would be lifted. The fixtures would be set in the sidewalk. Um, the fixture, and then of course the sidewalk would be replaced. It's a mishmash of concrete and bluestone where there's bluestone, bluestone would naturally go back. Um, the fixture that we're proposing to use is, um, is nice in that it has an adjustable beam spread. If you turn to the second page of the, the cut sheet, you can install the fixture and literally dial it so that the beam spread gets adjusted. You can also adjust the lumen output. So if it's a little bit too bright, you can dial it down. Um, so I purchased two of these fixtures so that we can hot wire them if you will, to a cord and plug, take them out in the field at night, decide whether they want to be 14 inches off the facade, or 16 or 18, and whether the spacing wants to be 3 feet, 4 feet, 5 feet, 6 feet. The fixtures just arrived. We'll do that mock-up and come back to the site plan, making a very specific request based on an actual field condition test. Um, and. Uh, so that's my sure show your place and the layout. Yeah, we'll do it in the field so that we yeah, get it yeah. so that it's nice and even, yeah. so that you don't have puddles of light and you get a nice wash on the, the facade. The proposal is to illuminate both of the facades on the street. Julie, are you accusing yourself on this one? Yeah, am I supposed to step away from the thing? All right. All right. See you next month. Thank you for your time. Okay have me on for four or five applications next time. So we did not have the basic Yeah, but you just, just need to, um, just need to. Okay. Yeah.
Was the removal of the building listed? Uh, yeah, I believe, and I, I believe that is listed too. And the building itself that will be removed, yes, it has been substantially altered over the years, but it is considered a contributing resource in the Stockade Historic District as uh, the 1976 National Register nomination notes for the district. So, so that said, um, some of the things that I have uh, made note of when you know after uh, viewing a full presentation of the hold on, let me back up and say may I make a motion that we just move ahead with discussing our interests and concerns as an identified involved agency in the secret process for the Kingstonian um, and that such interests that are discussed tonight would be summarized in a letter written by Mark and myself uh, uh, and submitted to the Lee agency, presumably the planning board uh, for this project. Do I have a second? Julie seconds that. Uh, okay, so with Julie seconding that motion, I open up the conversation for discussion among the commission about concerns related to this project uh, that would be addressed during the speaker process. Uh, so some of the items that I have, uh, you know, identified is that the project site has the potential to yield uh, important information uh, in the history or prehistory. Uh, such uh, as evidence of the formal, former presence of the stockade, which uh, crossed on or near the site, or uh, other previously unknown uh, archaeological resources. So uh, within, within the project area, 500 feet of the project area, the stockade, the existence of the stockade was found on Clinton Avenue in 1970. It's not known if that would be found on this site, it's a possibility. Um, that this project involves the existing uh, involves the demolition of an existing architectural resource in the Stockade Historic District, um, and the applicants may seek to re replicate this resource, uh, which has the potential to uh, create a false historical record. Uh, that this project involves new construction in the Stockade Historic District. Um, potential impacts include those that are construction related, such as falling objects, vibration from blasting or pile driving. Um, dewatering, flooding, subsidence, subs, subs, subsidence, and collapse. Uh, the project's uh, uh, close proximity to our two archaeological architectural resources are the Senate House and Grounds and the John Trechter House at 1 North Front Street may negatively be impacted uh, by this if proper precautions are um, taken. Um, additionally, new construction may impact the visual context of the district, including architectural components of the district um, buildings in this area, uh, height, scale, proportion, massing, penetration, ground floor the configuration style. Uh, it can impact streetscapes, skyline, landforms, openness to skies. The project may also impact the visual context of the Senate House, which is a significant state landmark. Um, and the project uh, as we understand it, proposes to change a uh, significant historic landscape feature of the historic district, which is the bluff, an important element to interpreting the district's history. Uh, and the National Register nomination for the Stockade uh, Historic District recognizes the following, that, quote, to this day, the boundary line of the stockade are formed by Green Street, Main Street, Clinton Avenue, and North Front Street, and are still intact. Also, amazingly enough, almost the entire bluff promontory forming the perimeter of this area elevated above the lowland is still comparatively intact. Therefore, the three first settlements in New York State, Albany, uh, New York, and Kingston, it is only Kingston that has uh, that the authentic elements of an original fortification remain. Documents indicate that this log palisade was in existence until the early 18th century, having been kept in repair as protection against later Indian raids. While this area at present is surrounded by commercial development, aerial photography has recently indicated the existence of outlines suggesting that the angle itself may as yet be relatively undisturbed. This area forms a sharp bluff and this may account for its preservation. So does anybody have any uh, objections or additional concerns or modifications, anything I, 
I was set. I can reread my notes. Any other impacts? <coughs> we have construction related impact, we have visual impacts, uh, demolition, community character. Those are the main concerns. Hmm? I think those are the main concerns. Okay. I mean, to be clear, that our concern is addressing it to the lead agency, presuming as the planning board, it's, it's not to say that we are opposed to the project, it's just that we have these concerns and it, uh, a thorough seeker process would be that due diligence to ensure that, you know, it, all mitigating impacts are taken. Uh, all impacts are mitigated. No, 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 you're going to have that by the 18th. Hmm? You're going to have that letter prepared by you and Mark by the 18th of yes. March. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Identifying, basically summarizing okay. what I just said. Okay. I, I, I have a question. Where is it? Do you have uh, uh, archaeology covered in case in excavation something? I did. I uh, did say that the yeah. project site has the potential to yield yield information important to history or prehistory, such as the existence. Um, of the stockade and also and or other previously unknown archaeological resources. I guess I'm just looking for uh, is there a process that we want to you know uh, describe if, if something is I will say you know, that they've they've engaged um, Joe Diamond mm -hmm. who's a doctor of archaeology mm -hmm. and he's working on the project right now. I think at this point, for this general letter, we don't, uh, we can be broad in our concerns. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we need it. Okay. We, we don't know. I know. We, yeah, we, yeah, we, it, yeah. it has been in Well, it's good to hear that they're working on this. Yeah. And Joe great. Diamond yeah. is great. Yeah. I, I do think that we as a commission support the idea of a development on this site. We just want it to be of the highest quality that it can be. So. That said, uh, do I have any other comments, objections to write Mark and I crafting a letter that summarizes what I just did, stated? I just want to say that I think that it's really important what you stated about it compromising the initial like borders of the fortification. I think that's the most significant element to me. Thank you. <coughs> So, may I make a motion that the Mark and I may draft a letter summarizing what I just said? Yeah. So, okay, do I have a second? Yeah. Okay. I want seconds. All in favor? Okay. Sort of Thanks. need to have that summarized because there were two motions there. I yeah, I guess sure I didn't that need that to do the motion because the first motion right. contained drafting the letter, but I guess it's more of like ending debate, which is I should have made hmm. the motion to end debate, right? No, I think you're fine. Okay. All right. There were two motions, though. There were two motions. Hmm. Yeah, I guess you can eliminate from the first motion the part about Mark and I as officers writing a letter and just put that in the motion that was the second the motion. Second motion. And, what, and what do we put in the first motion? Yeah. That sentence that we put in the first motion about Mark and I drafting a letter off, that the commission gives gives authority to Mark and myself to draft a letter put that in the second motion. Okay, but, the part but about, what's in the first motion? The first motion <laughs> was opening it up for discussion. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. So then I'm signing which one? Yes. <laughs> which one? The first and both? Yeah. Both motions? Yes. Okay. And then one other minor thing is the Ulster County minor. Historical Society. <laughs> Not minor, but uh, I let Leslie explain what that is. So um, the Ulster County Historical Society is putting on a preservation expo. And it's intended to be an educational, um, informational session for new home buyers who live in historic districts in the region, not just in this area. Um, and for people who do work um, that represent individual trades, they're going to be able to be on hand to answer the public's questions. So um, 
The expo is March 30th at the for the Alton County Historical Society's first preservation expo. They planned a full day. It's free to the public. Um, there'll be information sessions all day. Francis Gubler from the Preservation League will talk about New York State rehabilitation tax credits for historic properties. Um, there'll be another series of presentations. Those are still being finalized right now. But the plan is that the public can come and find out more about historic districts in general, um, how to start researching their, their house or another historic property. Um, as I said, the representatives from a variety of historic building trades will be on hand to answer questions, general qu trade uh, related questions based upon um, people's houses. And then um, on the topics of historic plaster, masonry, timber frame construction, barn and wood window restoration, antique, door hardware and more. Um, so we will be adding sort of more items to that um, expo that we were asked if we wanted to have a table at the expo. There will be other preservation um, boards who will be attending just to help members of the public learn more about historic districts if their house is in a historic district. Um, it's free for us to participate. It's free for anyone to, to visit and it's free for a for all of the, the people who will be giving demonstrations. So, do we want to Where is it taking place? Yeah, oh, yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. It's not um, happening at the Bevier House, which is Ulster County Historical Society's um, house museum, because there's not enough space. So it's going to be at the Marble Town Community Center. Um, the doors open to public at 10 a.m., and it's going to run until 3 p.m. Um, so that's on uh, 3564 Main Street. Stone Ridge. Wait, what's the address? 3564 Main Street, Stone Ridge. So do we want to have a table? Okay. So tell me when I'm happy to ask the third. Saturday oh. the 30th. So the third? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I think okay. it's helpful to have the commission wherever it can be third. to talk about preservation. We can bring our Sanborn maps. We can bring our uh, uh, Burley panorama. Uh, Talk about history, talk about preservation do's and don'ts. Mm -hmm. I'm in favor of HLPC having a boot. Do we have to make a motion for that? Yeah. No, but I, I think what you need to do is make sure that you're going to have the volunteers to staff it. For yeah, those hours. I, Leslie I mean, and I will okay. help you. All right. I mean, that would be. So, and anyone else who wants to join, but no more than one more person. Because <laughs> we can't have more. <laughs> okay, that's it. Thank you. Uh, do we have to, so we don't have to make a motion on that at all. Okay. Okay. So then that takes us to seven reorganizational discussion. Okay. Let's see. Go to sleep. So 
they have to be directed through our office um, immediately. Um, we appreciate the uh, efforts of commission members. However, having independent and outside conversations with applicants, I'm going to discourage that. They, they should make us, we are the point, okay? So that's, that's got to happen first. That communication has to be consistent. And that really then directs itself to record, our record keeping um, and our ability to generate agendas and any other communications that have to go out. Um, if you have a question or an issue, call me, email me. I'm available. I'm more than willing to speak with you, um, but we have to we have to follow city codes. Okay, so that's where we are at. Um, and like I said, independent contact with applicants. You can't do that outside of the commission. Um, if someone approaches you and says, you know, I want to file an application, but I have a question, you can. It, 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 there's a very fine line there. So you need to direct them first through the department, and then it will be given to the commission members to discuss on the whole. You can't be doing that independently and acting independently on behalf of, of the commission, okay? Um, training, we are scheduling an ethics training for all members. Um, and we're looking at right now either April 1st or April 2nd. Um, probably at 6 o'clock at night, Dan Gartenstein will be doing that training. Um, we've done it with the Planning Board, we've done it with the Heritage Area Commission. Um, you'll be also be asked to complete a financial disclosure form as part of that. And that's another, it's a form, it's in your packet somewhere. But you'll, you'll be, yeah. I mean, if you've filled one out for one agency already, Kevin and Julie, you don't have to do it again. But, okay. Um, secret training. I'm going to do a secret training class um, or workshop for all the commission members so that you fully understand it. Um, and I did include also in the packets um, the new secret cookbook, which is a pretty basic document, but it's useful. Um, as well as all of the forms that are used, whether they're the short form, the long form, uh, or the full form. And that is, you know, so I just want you to familiarize yourself with those. And we'll be going through that as part of the training. Um, also, I'm going to be asking commission members to participate in other training sessions that come up. Um, there are several training sessions that the county of Ulster offers or other agencies offer that I think are useful and beneficial just to continue um, and be well-rounded. So I'm going to encourage that throughout. Could I make a recommendation about training as well? We have obligations for CLG status, training mm -hmm. related to CLG status that we need to do that are specifically preservation related. In the past we've had um, members of SHPO come and speak and then, to the board exactly, to CLG. Yes. And it, I think this would be a good time now that we have a new administrative body and we yes. also have a new um, member of the Common Council as a liaison to ask for another update on, on sort of our requirements as a somewhat right. separate CLG body too. Yeah, okay. no, absolutely, it's perfect. Yeah, I mean, and the, I would certainly target those kinds of things for you guys, um, but that doesn't mean that you can't or you shouldn't attend maybe some of these other sessions that might prove useful. Um, 
you know, if, if the county is offering something with, you know, the environment, you might want to attend those. Okay. Um, so the entire application um, has been reworked. You're going to find a new application in here for both the landmarks and the signage. Um, they've been reworked um, with the calendar updated. Um, there were some missteps in the calendar that I have corrected. So we have a due date and a meeting date as the first page. Um, you have the regular application. Um, as you see tonight, you're going to have decision documents for every application. It's no longer part of the application itself. Um, so all of that information will be here. It's all going to be posted on the city's website. Each component is going to be a separate element. So when it's posted, it can be updated individually. Well, I'm not going to have to repost the entire thing over and over. So take a look at that. Signage is the same thing. Is there any mechanism? Because we had worked on drafts um, with the hope that as a body, we would be able to make improvements to both. Take a look at it. This is just what I've proposed. OK. okay. So absolutely take a look at it. Um, if you have a question, um, let me know. Yeah, let's uh, take it and, and look at it yeah. over the next month. Yeah, I have a draft from earlier. Yeah, I have a draft too. Okay. Right. Um, one, one of the things was that we thought would be helpful is that, I mean, just touching on one thing that we thought, we don't have application numbers. That it would be nice to have all the applications get a specific serial number so that we can track it and, and, and reference back to it and not try to find a date. So if that's something we could add, like for each applicant's application, add a serial number. Okay. Yeah. I can do that. That's easy enough. Thanks. Um, you're also going to find in here an information form. Um, this is a form that we ask you to fill out. It's confidential. It is kept in our office. And it's just for our purposes only, so that if you, if we go on a field visit, or if you're at a meeting and you have an issue, I have this form. I have your, your information, your emergency contact, OK? So that's very simple. Um, this is the dis disclosure statement that you're going to need to complete and fill out. Um, we'll do that after the ethics training. And the other is just pretty basic stuff. Um, so other things, you know, are just basically Robert's rules of orders will be followed um, at all meetings. There has to be an annual election of officers, so that's a chair, a vice chair, and a secretary. So we'll have to do that annually. Uh, I'm presuming we'll probably do that next month. Um, the chairperson shall oversee the meeting. In the event that the chair can't be here, the vice chair will uh, hold the meeting and oversee it. Um, and as tonight, as you've seen, um, it would be determined by the rest of the group the one of the others oversee the meeting. Okay. Um, the agenda is going to be set and published and that's going to be followed. Um, we so have to I don't, we're there now. So can we talk about agendas? If the commission, especially as a body, wants to have something discussed at the next meeting, what is the protocol for putting that on the agenda? It would have to come to me. And? And then it would come to me before the commission, before the agenda is set. 
Okay, so, so once we, the agenda is set, I mean, but I but we I finished because the that's day what, after the meeting. After that's our what lunch. gets published. I know, but I sent you the items that we had discussed to you the very next day after our meeting, after our February meeting. So I'm not sure what to do. Do I need to call you and tell you what this? Like I like I don't know how else I can be. Email. Email is best. But, I, mean, I, I understand. I understand. Okay. I mean, we don't want to be opposition. We just want to be able to discuss items publicly following the open meetings law. So that's just that's where our frustration lies. It's the only time that we can <laughs> talk about the things that we need to talk about as a board okay. in front of the public. So. Okay. Um, regular attendance. Um, that's going to be something that's going to be coming up. But there, there has to be regular attendance at meetings. And we will be, I mean, the, the majority of you do attend. Oh, we have near, we have near perfect. perfect. Attendance. Perfect. Tonight is a clerk, <laughs> yes. um, but that's going to be a requirement. Um, and I mean, if there's something you know out of the ordinary, I understand. Um, so then, I guess the last thing. Uh, I think we covered everything. So take a look at the information. Let me know what you think. Um, I I have we have no objection with the communication. Fully agree. Uh, we were without a clerk for nine months, so no. we're, we're very grateful and, and ready to have your assistance. Uh, just want to make that abundantly clear. Yeah. No, I mean, it's one of the things that I saw immediately, that communication has to be first and foremost. And like I said, um, what cannot happen is that individual members on the commission cannot meet independently with applicants. Uh, they have to be pulled through our office. That's the only way we can operate effectively. Wholeheartedly agree. Okay. I have a question. Uh, in the future, can we receive uh, applications in just straight PDF format, uh, the, the windmill uh, attachment totally got me all filter. I yeah. couldn't open it. I sent them out through PDF. Uh, my computer, for some reason, received it as a windmill attachment. I don't, maybe it's... I, I, okay, yeah, yeah I, I, I PDF them here, yeah. and then I, that's yeah. how I send them out. No, no, no. I mean, I actually, Kevin showed me how to save uh, it as a PDF. And then maybe it was maybe uh, we can check the email yeah. address and make sure we've typed in it. Yeah. Something went crazy. Yeah, okay. I can look at it. Okay. Maybe, maybe just the address that I typed on. D. Bear oh, at Gmail. Yeah. I've never had a problem in the past. It was just yeah. an attachment file type issue. <coughs> That's yeah, all maybe. it was, yeah. yeah. Maybe it was too large? It didn't so. get back. So. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, that I, means I, it's I can get really three. large uh, capacity files normally. 20 megabytes. Do you have a sense of when those meeting packets would be <coughs> sent to us? Because in the past, when they were mailed out or hand delivered, we sometimes got them a couple weeks beforehand, which meant we could do a lot of research. Do you have a sense if it would be a week or? Um, well, obviously, I have to wait till the deadline. So. I mean, I could do it a week in advance. I mean, I try and do them as, turn them around, but. Because a lot of us go do site visits 
I mean, we look from the public right away at the building. Okay, to I was just going to say that. <laughs> no. We don't go on the property. We look from the sidewalk. So it just helps us understand the proposal. And then we can also do research in like the Chris yeah. system or mm -hmm. other places to get historic photographs. It gives us more time. Okay. Thank you. I'll try to turn them around as quickly. I mean, I obviously we have when we get the applications in. We have certain things we have to do in order to get the agenda pulled together. So, and we want to check and make sure the application is complete. So, the, so, so Scott Denton had one of the applications, but, but so was it just we didn't have any information to go along with that application. Right. So, if we're going to stick with the rules, then that item that probably right. shouldn't be put on the agenda until he gives us the cut sheets. Uh, and site plan for the way the lights are going to go, any other information we need to understand the proposal. Yeah, I mean, we're in a state of transition. Yeah. No, I, so. I, I, I recognize that. No. We'll get there. Yeah. I mean, we haven't, been, we haven't accomplished that yet so far. <laughs> it gets to a goal. It's been a goal yeah. <laughs> to have complete applications. So. Mm -hmm. Because otherwise, people might feel like we're giving them grief when all we're trying to do is be able to visualize what they're asking us to write. Yeah, it's like, for, for instance, the balcony is difficult because in order for us to understand the proposal, I mean, they were giving us a cut sheet of the, of the... Well, what you'll see in the application, the new application, there's a checklist. Yeah. There's, so, there's been checklists before. Well... Not great. Mm -hmm. we, so we'll, there is we'll a check, there there is checklist can. and... Yeah. Applicants are required to check off every single one of them and then sign it at the bottom. So for, for next month, will you be using the new application or will you? I'm going to try and use the new application, yes, because so the old application still references the building safety division, their phone numbers, and, and it still has components that I've removed, so. Is there a time? a time frame that we can give you immediate feedback so that you can yeah I mean I'm going to post it online but I can that's the beauty of the way I've developed it um, I've developed it so that I have different segments so I can take one segment and update it without having to change everything else and then when an applicant goes online they can they just have to print out all the different pieces. So, since we're talking about application, I mean, this is this is just a mock-up we did, or I did on my own, shared it with everybody. But it's based on, you know, it's it's all development information that we need. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it most importantly, like, gets to the heart of what the application is. Like, okay. Um, and you know, it also allows staff comment box up here. Later date that the staff received it um, and the application ID, which would be really helpful. Yeah, because yeah, like Scott's been been to us with VR1 Wall Street eight times. So which application is we referring to? Um, uh, additional information that we have, like that applicants didn't know that they needed to share with us that was helpful. Like if they're going for a historic tax credit project, that helps us evaluate the building. We know that they're going to be working with Shippo. Okay. Um, yeah, that wasn't in the old application no, at all. No. Uh, also, like information about the applicant, about any architect, engineer, and the property owner, making sure that the property owner has signed off on that. I think you're going to find a lot of that yeah. in the new one. So, well, so, let me give you this copy yeah. too. That would be great. We have a very simple checklist for, mm -hmm. I mean, literally, you have to check in the boxes. And then this was carried over from the old application. And then more more space to write a decision than what we had on our old application. So, okay. Thank you. That's the pile. <laughs> okay. Uh, so there's, moving on to the agenda, you had a um, budget overview? Yeah. Um, the council, when they adopted the 2019 budget, also adopted a fee for HLPC applications. Oh, really? They were 
never collected until now. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm collecting them. Um, I think we're up to 150 bucks for the three applications tonight. How much is the application fee? Fifty dollars. Fifty dollars. Well, maybe maybe that will encourage Scott to bundle all of us right. into one. So, just where, people. Uh, you know, um, I I do have a communication into the council to add a revenue line. So that will assist in offsetting some of the expenditures. So Definitely. That's being done. Thank you. It's a good thing. Yeah. There's a lot of work that goes into that. Yes. My only concern is that we have a hard enough time sometimes getting people to come and not feel like a preservation um, responsibility is, a, is an undue burden on them. Yeah. So I'm wondering if there might be a way to take some of that fund to promote the fact that people can come here in advance of doing any work and talk about their project. I don't think a lot of people know that they're able to do that in advance. I think that's going to naturally happen, um, and we do this quite often with the planning board, um, where if an individual is not quite ready to fill out um, and finalize a formal application, they're allowed to come for discussion purposes only. Okay. And that's, I think, the same thing that would happen here, and that's the way I would Treated. And we've done that in the past, it's just that I don't know that the public knows that, that they can Well, I think meetings. having a, a body yeah. and, and, a, and an office to go to that will address that is going to make a big difference. Yeah. And one of the things we'll be doing is updating the website. Uh, I'm going to be doing that. So we, I, I can give you text for that too. Um, uh, with we had ideas for uh, different pages and content, uh, and one of the big things on the web page can be, you know, applicants who are considering uh, restoration or work to a historic property in a historic district or an individual landmark can come to the Landmarks Commission at any time uh, to talk. And, well, and the other thing is, is that, you know, under a previous CLG grant, there were those brochures that were done. Um, I think for the most part, they're still valid. Um, I don't know that they were ever distributed. We have well, we know they're them. not. Yeah. They were. We, we know Tommy has cases of them down at the building. Oh, I know. And I then know. And they want to bring them all to my department, and I'm like, I don't know where to he was bringing them to us. It's just that all have <laughs> yeah. 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 Most yeah. people get their submissions online yeah. now and not in printed form. So. I mean, well, they are online. They're great so, for the yeah. events that we go to. They're but great for rest stops. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll take them to right. the Ulster <laughs> County Historical I think, Society. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just a matter of making sure that they get distributed. I mean, they just sat in cases, cardboard cases. Yeah, it's just that with most people, when they are considering a project, they don't, they just want to go online to find that information. And it, well, they all are online, so. So it's just. And they can find them there. But some people like, you know. Yeah, they're open applicants. They like paper. They appreciated those brochures. Yeah. You can hand them out with every application. Yeah. Well, that was the <laughs> idea. <laughs> yeah. um, Friends of Historic Kingston has been handing them out. We give them a lot of them. The other thing that never went anywhere was the historic ma district maps. Yeah, that would be now we didn't have anywhere to go with them. Right. <laughs> so one and that's another thing that we you know we haven't used them officially because they're not adopted. But um, you know but they were from the engineer. The they're from engineer. they're based on the engineer's map and it's just extracted for one each district on format on a page. I can share that with you. Obviously. Like it would have to get. Is approved. did the county do that? I think count, the county did that, right? No, this was the city. The city did the district's map, and uh, the engineer shared me the map of all the historic districts. Uh, and so here's an example. So I just took, I just basically took that and blew it up. Okay. As the as a very easy to understand, you know. 
boundary map, where the old one had a uh, aerial view photograph, and it was you can't oh, see the streets very well. Right. So we haven't used this because it's not official. And the county map had a lot of known issues that we had to sort out at the okay. Conservation Advisory Council. At the I know the county did a bunch of stuff. Yeah, that, that was all. They were using a, an incomplete landmarks list. Okay. And then you have the par the problem with the with the parcel viewer with the unidentified parcels. They lost right. Quartz Mansion, for example, nine acres yeah. disappeared off the map. Yeah. It was just the street names still on there. Okay. All right. So. I mean, we did all this and it just sat with us because. No, no, we to right. yeah, no, we <laughs> so we'll work on that. I mean, you know, one battle at a time. <laughs> it's ready, a lot of it. So, um, next meeting, well, I can move on to next. You're done with the budget? Yeah. Okay. Uh, next meeting is April 4th at 6 30, conference room number one here. Uh, uh, does anybody else have any other business? to discuss. Okay. Uh, I uh, move to adjourn the meeting. Uh, <laughs> Julie said. <laughs> Julie's like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All so tired. All right. Uh, meeting adjourned at 8.30. I don't know that anybody